out, you see on TV, you listen to our music, you automatically think that because we are famous, we are very rich. And we are rich. But quite often, you're not seeing it. I know that throughout my career, I've had to have three other things that I am doing. And quite often, it is from those endeavors that you make the money that you now use to put in your, your, your music. I remember that in the 80s, um, we were in a tough economic situation in Nigeria. Foreign com companies, it's not today it started, foreign companies were actually leaving. They were divesting and they were leaving. We used to have Polygram, remember? Yeah. We used to have CBS, remember? Yeah. We used to have EMI, remember? Yeah. These are international music recording companies and they were fully represented in Nigeria, but they began to go. Some of us took the decision to register our own recording companies, finance our own music in every way, shape, and form. When you have, I can tell you, remember the, the song One Love? Can I tell you I didn't make a cobo out of it? Yes, that's the truth. Because nobody was giving it to me. It made money, but it was making money for other people. I know people who built houses based on what they made out of. That, that was a monster hit. Yeah. So they were building houses. I will take your questions. Just, just hear me out, because I know that the facts I'm giving you, you had no idea. You can go along the line. You can ask many other musicians, how many? This song that you, you made... Okay, take somebody, he's passed away now. Um, sweet mother. Yeah. Ask, him, if he, ask his family how much money they made from that monster international hit. Not much. Because nobody was representing them. And so anybody can pick up that music, re-record it, use it anyhow, and make money out of it. And they get nothing. So right from the beginning, we began to fight for these rights, it used to be, there was a time when if you pirated somebody's music, it wasn't a, 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 a criminal offense, it was a civil offense. Oh, you get fined just a little bit of money, which you are quick to pay, and you go right back to what you were doing. All you needed was one LP, that was what we had in those days, and you could make copies. And when we had cassettes, just one cassette, you just duplicate and you make all the money. This is what we've been going through. So some of us have been in this battle for a very long time, sacrificing. And I look at the younger artists today and I say, do they have any idea the sacrifices we made? I've gone on a hunger strike in front of NTA. Why? Because they were using my stuff. They used Iyogogo for eight years. Without my permission, not a Kobo was given to me. Eight good years. So the battle has been fierce. And we've made sacrifices. Now how does someone tell me at age 70, never mind the good looks, God is faithful. <laughs> and over 40 years in the music industry. That since 2011, I've not made a Kobo. Kosan has not paid me. And Kosan has collected billions. My uh, dear sister, who has passed away, I found out, Christiansen, whose music is still being played. She wasn't getting anything. And what was their excuse? Oh, they didn't know how to reach her. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> you didn't know how to reach her, so you've been chopping. So where's the money now? There are so many. I believe that once we can open this up, we can begin to recover some of them. Because it extends, you know, I'm saying, I said 2011, because that's when Kosan was approved. But beyond that, there was something called PMRS. They also need to account for what they received in PMRS. Because PMRS, what we were hoping at PMRS was that the coming together of everybody. And we worked very hard.
to make it happen. Uh, unbeknownst to us, there were people who didn't want it because they didn't want to lose the position they were holding. They wanted to consolidate. So it goes back beyond 2011, how much some of us have been owed. We haven't seen a couple. I, I will use this opportunity, and I've done so in the past on so many occasions, to speak to NCC. You are not doing your work. You are not protecting people like me. They are fully aware of my situation. And they're doing nothing about it. Many cases will say, I want to go to court, and it's NCC that will say, no, don't, we are busy trying to say, how long will it take? How long? So this is a call out to NCC, do the right thing. You need to audit their, their, their books. You need to find out exactly from their mouth. They have told us they've collected over one billion, and I believe by this time it would have crossed two billion at least. What did they do with my money, with his money, with money belonging to artists? We just can't keep quiet and say we want things to change in Nigeria. And this is a government agency that is not doing its work. The question goes to NCC. Do your work. And when you see me as an artist, please look, at, look behind me. There are many families that are standing behind me, including those who, make the, who made the sleeves. Not now, they don't do sleeves anymore. All of those, those who were printing the, the record, everybody is standing behind me. Even the marketers are standing behind me and making money from what I do. But one thing that we didn't recognize at that time, many of us didn't, including the big stars, we didn't read the fine print. When you sign an agreement with a recording company, you are signing away your intellectual property. It was when we began this agitation for intellectual property and making sure our copyright dues are paid that we realized, oh my God, many of us had signed away these songs to the recording companies. But mine was not that bad. Reason, I broke off after the second LP. And I registered Ayolo Productions, my own company. And it was Ayolo Productions that was financing the recording of my works. And all that the other people did for me were distribu distributors. So that I signed a distributing agreement with Premier, with Polygram, and, and then Premier. They never owned my copyright. That's why I can give uh, MCSN a long list of songs that belong to me. So my advice to the younger artists, read the fine prints. Ensure that you maintain control over your intellectual property. That's what you got. That's a major advice that they should listen. Don't sign it away to anybody. Because it means that when that work is being utilized somewhere else, that money that should come to you is actually going to somebody else. You don't own it.